Hello to all the learners. I hope you are all doing well and uh, studying. Today we are going to talk about this anatomy topic which is called the posterior abdominal wall. Okay, so we have anterior abdominal wall which completed yesterday and this is posterior abdominal wall. Okay. In this session, what are we going to see? So anterior, what we studied was, it was anterior la anterior lateralities and we talked about all those different layers from, you know, uh, superficial to deep. We talked about the skin, we talked about distribution of the superficial fascia and we talked about the muscles that is flat muscles and the vertical muscles and we even talked about the rectus sheath formation right so all these were the anterior abdominal muscles and the structures and we also talked about the rectus sheath contents and also the hematoma that is one anterior uh, abdominal wall applied aspect we discussed a little bit in detail okay today we are going to look at the posterior abdominal wall and uh, in this one we are uh, going to discuss the muscles and how they are you know um, the, how they are placed in the posterior abdominal wall the origin insertion their action their nerve supply all that we are going to discuss and also how they uh, have their coverings that is by the thoracolumbar uh, fascia thoracolumbar fascia keeps all these posterior abdominal wall muscles the muscles of the back and connected it to the anterior abdominal wall how is that done so all that we are going to discuss in this particular session okay so here you are uh, with dr roini and uh, i'm an educator at an academy for the subject anatomy and uh, here are my some of my educational credentials i have my md from kmc mangalore which is located in karnataka and uh, here is another you know, degree, PhD from Savita University, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. So both these are coastal regions in uh, different, two different states. Karnataka is a different state, Tamil Nadu is a different state. And then here, another state, which is Virginia, where uh, I studied my medical transcription and MBA, hospital administration. So this is in USA. So all these are my various educational credentials, okay? Other than that, I have some small certification courses also done. So I have got always plan B, plan C, plan D, like that if I don't want to do anything in particular, I can always skip to other field, okay? So this is how I get motivated. This is how I keep myself motivated with work, by doing different work. So always for me, the change of, you know, work or doing something else, even when it comes to study. If you are studying one subject, if you get bored, it's not like two hours I'm taking a break. I'm doing something else. So read something else. So that itself is a break. Okay. So with this, um, you know, word, I would like to to the topic. Posterior abdominal wall. What is posterior abdominal wall now? It is a complex region in the anatomy because it has various important structures. It is formed by first lumbar vertebrae. It has this pelvic girdle, then posterior abdominal wall muscles, and all those associated fascia, we keep them together. Okay, so this is what is going to uh, compose the posterior abdominal wall. So there are some major vessels also in this uh, mm -hmm. site and also nerves and organs located on the inner surface of the posterior abdominal wall. Because on the outer surface of posterior abdominal wall, you will have muscles of, uh, you know, the back, the lower back. So that's why we have mentioned very precisely that it is on the inner surface of the posterior abdominal wall. Now coming to what are those muscles? There are five different muscles in the posterior abdominal wall. All right, we'll start with the first one. It is iliacus, psoas major, minor. Then we have quadratus lumborum. Then comes the diaphragm. So these are the different, you know, muscles. Diaphragm, I'm going to take up in a very different, uh, you know, session because diaphragm itself is a almost half an hour plus uh, explanation with all those applied aspects. So it will be a complete different session. So if you look at all the other muscles which are on the, you know, posterior abdominal wall, you can see there is iliacus. 
and psoas, they are together. They have a common tendon of insertion. I'll write it as common insertion and uh, that is called iliopsoas. Iliopsoas. Okay. Then you have quadratus lumborum. This also extends into the lumbar region. So you should remember the nerve supply also will be from the thoracic and lumbar nerves. Thoracic lumbar region, it extends. So it is that high. And then it is one more thing that you need to remember this is, in this is, it is attached to the 12th rib. So you can imagine it is in the thoracic region also. So it is a kind of a muzzle which stabilizes the rib. This is a floating rib. 12th rib is a floating rib. It stabilizes the floating rib during respiratory movement. So this is a very important muzzle even during respiration. So keep that in mind. So there is one more muscle which is very important during respiration that is diaphragm. It helps both in inspiration as well as expiratory movements. So this picture shows you such beautiful picture where you can see the adrenal gland you can identify. You can see the kidney, the right and left kidney in situ. In situ, these are, they are not removed, it is in situ. There is renal artery, the right renal and the left renal. So look at the right and left renal vessels okay then you can also identify the renal vein then there is inferior vena cava so this is inferior vena cava and you can also see the abdominal iota where it bifurcates at the level of l1 okay so in two right and left common iliac there is the right common iliac left common iliac all right, so you can see the other structures also. You can see the rectum and the urinary bladder. Obviously, this is a male pelvis. So now what I want you to see is the iliac crest, okay, iliac crest, which will give attachment to all those, you know, muscles. We have uh, the oblique muscles coming from there. We also have these uh, um, tensor fascia lata muscle and then you can also see this psoas muscle this is the psoas muscle i'll just put a mark on this psoas major and this is the iliacus so this psoas and iliacus together they form a common tendon that is called iliopsoas iliopsoas so that is a common tendon so here all these things you can see one important thing you have to notice here is the ureter relation. Ureter runs over the psoas muscle. Ureter. Okay, you can see ureter is very closely associated with the psoas muscle. All right. So you can see all this and you can see that how it, you know, um, joins the urinary bladder. This is how it joins the urinary bladder at the trigone. And all other structures, you can see the rectum, you can identify. And you can also identify the other structures around it. You can also see part of the spleen here. All right. This is the adrenal gland. And you can also see the abdominal iota branches. Other than the renal branches, there are so many other branches you can identify. All right. So there is a branch here also, lumbar branch. Next, coming to the quadratus lumborum. Quadratus lumborum, what do you identify? You should remember it is present bilaterally on either side of the posterior abdominal wall. So it is a thick muscular sheet. It is quadrilateral in shape. That's why it is called quadratus. And it is present in the lumbar region. So here you can see it originates from the iliac crest, iliolumbar ligament and fibers travel superior medially because it want to go towards the rib and the vertebrae. So it is superior medially. The angle is like this. Then it goes to the transverse process of the L1 to L4 and also up to the 12th rib. So it in a way it stabilizes the 12th rib during the respiratory movements. That is one important action you can note from quadratus lumborum. And it also helps in all these movements like extension of the vertebral column and also lateral flexion. So when you do lateral flexion, 
and extension what uh, actually stabilizes your vertebral column is quadratus lumbos, lumborum and it has to 12th rib is a um, your floating rib so it has to be fixed when you have breathing movements so it is quadratus lumborum which fixes the 12th rib during the respiratory movements other than that the innervation is from t12 to l4 okay so here is quadratus lumborum you can see the, all these transverse processes giving attachment to the quadratus lumborum so the fibers are going in this direction that is superior medially superior medially directed Next, you have psoas muscle. Psoas muscle, what is psoas muscle doing? So, psoas muscle has two things. One is major and another one is minor. The psoas major muscle, you know, it has the origin from T12, L1 to L5. And you can see it is also from all this transverse process of the vertebrae. So, it is coming downwards. Okay, it is not upwards. It is coming downwards. Then it inserts onto the lesser trochanter of the femur. And the function of this is, because the function, you should remember always where the insertion takes place, that is where the action is. Insertion point is the point where the action of the muscle happens. So where is it inserted? To the lesser trochanter of the femur. So the flexion of the hip at um, hip joint is done by psoas muscle along with the iliacus together. So psoas major is there, then there is a minor one that is a weak flexure of the lumbar you know, column, vertebral column. So this is also originating from the vertebral bodies and it goes to the pectineal line as you can see. It is a smaller muscle compared to the major. The name itself tells you the major is bigger one and the minor is a smaller one. So obviously the minor would be having a less uh, importance because it's a weaker flexor and uh, psoas major is a strong flexor of the hip joint. It combines with the iliacus fiber. So together they have a common tendon that gets inserted onto the lesser trochanter of the femur, right? Okay, now, now you see this quadratus lumborum. This is a quadrilateral muscle. That's why the name quadratus, okay? And uh, lumborum, the last portion tells you that it is from the lumbar vertebrae. It is from L1 to L4. So the nerve T12 is also included. So it is the ventral rami nerves T12 up to the L3 are the ones which supply. And uh, you can see the psoas major. You can see the psoas minor. See, compared to the major, how small the psoas minor is. Let me draw the direction of the fibers for you. Quadratus lumborum is superior medially. So, it is going upwards like this. And uh, this is the 12th rib. It prevents the 12th rib from rattling during inspiratory movements. And uh, this is the direction of the fibers. It is downwards. And this is also downwards. Okay, all these are downwards. So what happens is wherever the insertion is, the action is happening there. So it is going to the lesser trochanter of femur. And here these are also going to the femur. So since they are going to the femur, you will see that the action is on the joint that it crosses. It crosses the hip joint. So obviously it will act on the hip joint. What does it do? It does flexion of the flexor of the hip joint. So this is a strong flexor and the psoas is a weak flexor, but not of the hip joint because it does not cross the hip joint. So according to the rule, anything that crosses the joint, only then it can act on the joint. If it doesn't cross, then it does not act on the joint. Now these uh, psoas minor fibers, they don't cross this joint the hip joint, but it does cross all those intervertebral joints. So it will act on the uh, vertebral joints, but not on the hip joint. So notice that. Next, iliacus. Iliacus you have, it is inserted onto the lesser trochanter of femur and you can see the function is a flexion of the hip. 
okay so that is a function along with the psoas major and uh, coming to the fascia that it covers so here the psoas fascia it covers the psoas major muscle and it is attached to the lumbar vertebrae medially okay medially it is attached to lumbar vertebrae and it is continuous with the thoraco lumbar fascia laterally and it continues with the iliac iliacus fascia also inferiorly so above it is free the medial part it is continuous with the lumbar vertebrae and laterally you can see thoraco lumbar fascia and it is continuous with the iliac fascia inferiorly so all these are the directions in which it is spread and now coming to thoraco lumbar fascia i just mentioned what is thoraco lumbar fascia now thoraco lumbar fascia is having three layers okay it encloses so many muscles with its three layers it has an anterior middle and posterior you know layers now between the anterior and middle you have one set of muscle between posterior and middle you have another set of muscles let's look at the diagram itself to see which layers are enclosing which muscle now you have to remember this is a important viva question as well as an mcq question what is important is between the anterior and middle layers what muscle it encloses so you just imagine the one which is uh, you know very close to the visceral organs or the ribs obviously has to be the one which is anterior most anterior is ventral side the one which is closer to this ventral organs so now quadratus lumborum is close to those visceral organs and obviously it will be between anterior and middle layers then comes the middle and the posterior one the ones which are the muscles of the back deep muscles of the back will be the one which is close to the posterior layer so obviously that is between middle and the posterior layers okay so now here if you look at this one you have uh, the anterior layer here then you have the middle layer here then comes the posterior layer okay so this one anterior layer this is the anterior layer this is the middle layer and the posterior layer so here you can see the muscle quadratus lumborum this is the psoas major and this one is deep muscles of the Now, any clinical relevance? If I have to talk about what is psoas sign? Psoas sign is a medical sign. What does that indicate? It gives you some indication that something is not right. Okay. So here, irritation to psoas, iliopsoas group of muscles can elicit a pain in that region called psoas sign. Here, the psoas sign is elicited by flexion of the thigh. at the hip joint so whenever the person flexes the thigh he will find that uh, the region of psoas and the iliacus are giving him kind of pain sensation and the test is positive if the patient reports lower abdominal pain also so lower abdominal pain and whenever the hip is flexed the psoas sign is noticed and right sided psoas sign can also be indication of appendicitis so you have to check whether it is appendix uh, that is involved or just the muscle that is involved so you have to ensure that appendix is fine to in, to make sure that psoas is the only one which is um you know getting uh, him the trouble so as the iliopsoas contracts it comes into contact with the inflamed appendix and that also produces on the right side in case the appendix is irritated and inflamed next coming to the lumbar vertebrae okay in this region we also have lumbar vertebrae let's see what are some of the features of the lumbar vertebrae so we have uh, the vertebral bodies are bigger compared to the thoracic or the cervical vertebrae correct then we also have that the body is kidney shaped the body is kidney shaped unlike the other thoracic vertebrae which has got heart shaped and the cervical has got oval shaped and they are deeper anteriorly than posteriorly anteriorly it is deeper and posteriorly it is not so during the 
lumbosacral angle the it, it always has an angle so it is a, it has got an angle and uh, that curvature secondary curvature it is called secondary curvature it will complement because of the way it is positioned and uh, there is vertebral foramen that is triangular in shape and it has transverse processes which are longer and stouter compared to the transverse process of the thoracic and articular uh, facets are there on the sides which are heavier because all the muscles that you have on the back side are heavier so compared to the uh, thoracic region the ones which are on the back side of the lumbar region are heavier like you have the latissimus dorsi that's a bulky muscle then you have uh, all these muscles which are deepest muscles they are the they are the group of erector spinae muscles. They are all bulky now. So now all these can attach on the lumbar vertebrae. So it needs more surface area. That's the reason the lumbar vertebrae transverse processes are bulkier and, slend, uh, and slender. So now here you can see <clears throat> spinous processes. Spinous process is the one which is pointed backwards. They are short and more broader compared to the transverse uh, uh, sorry, the spinous process of the thoracic vertebrae. They are more, uh, you know, spiny and uh, more pointed. So that's why you can feel it on the surface. But the lumbar region, you can't feel it. Then there are mammillary processes. And you can see the fifth lumbar vertebrae, that is L5, has got its own distinctive characteristic features. Okay. And it has the notably large vertebral body compared to the other one because it has to complement and sit on the, the vertebral body of the sacrum. So it has that last portion is really bulky and heavy because it has to carry the entire body weight on its, uh, you know, uh, body of the vertebra. So the L5 has different features and next comes the sacrum. So it tries to complement the size and shape of the sacrum than complementing the L4. And there are various ligaments. When you see the ligaments, you will be um, able to appreciate how much of importance is given to ligaments in this vertebral region. So there is anteriorly, this is where we have all the abdominal contents and we have all those, uh, you know, um, thoracic contents. So this could be any of them. So here, we, since we are talking about lumbar region, we'll stick to the lumbar region. So here, lumbar region, this is lumbar vertebrae. So it need not be which one it is, but these are lumbar vertebrae. So here you have the anteriorly placed ligament. It is called anterior longitudinal ligament. Then we have posterior longitudinal at the back of the body of the vertebra. Then we have uh, all these are the lamina. Okay, these are called lamina. So lamina from right and left will have to be covered by a ligament that is called flava. Flavum. Ligamentum flavum. Then between the spine also you need. So it is called interspinous. So this is spine actually. This is also spine and this is the supraspinous, supraspinous. These are the ligaments that are present around the vertebral bodies, the processes. Now there is a condition called excessive lumbar lordosis. So sometimes the lordosis is present that forms the, you know, uh, there is some curvature. There is a concavity at the back that is uh, abnormal anterior curvature. If anterior curvature is there, but if it is abnormally exaggerated, then it is characterized by anterior tilting pelvis also, then that is called excessive lumbar lordosis. Okay. So we will develop usually this uh, as a temporary, um, you know, um, thing during their pregnancy. But later on, once the child is born, it resolves after the childbirth and they will obtain the normal position. But in either sex, the obesity could be one of the reasons for excessive lumbar lordosis. So it increases not only weight of the abdomen, but also it puts a lot of pressure on the those vertebral uh, vertebrae that are present at the back. That is lumbar vertebrae.
so it can occur at the result of altered line of gravity also so all this back pain and uh, the herniated disc all these are some of the things that you can expect as consequences so here stenosis lumbar spinal stenosis so it is actually hereditary but uh, it could also be stenosis means what narrowing of the canal so this can cause compression of the structures that are inside that is the spinal cord and also those nerves that exit out the ventral rami dorsal rami the ones which exit out that also can be compressed so it can even worsen with age because of decrease in collagen and uh, decrease in connective tissue and uh, also because of herniation of the disc and lumbar spinal stenosis can sometimes be treated surgically as the decompressive laminectomy okay laminectomy can be done by lamina on both the sides you can have a small cut there and it, the pressure could be released for the contents that are inside this is the content and it comes to this is the vertebral body okay this is the body so this laminectomy could be done so now clinical presentation of uh, this is secondary to lumbar spinal stenosis so now here you can see with the extension the pain is elicited so extension provokes the all the symptoms just like the sciatica the person uh, experiences pain along the line of sciatic nerve and here when he is uh, trying to bend like uh, as if he is pushing a cart or uh, something then he feels much better because there is more gap that is formed and the structures that are you know usually compressed will not be compressed so flexion uh, at the lumbar region can always you know give him relief so that's why this is like a chopping cart sign so flexion will be making him fine but extension is what you know makes the pain in the or gives pain and weakness in the legs so this is the lumbar spinal stenosis position the patient tries to use so coming to one um, uh, mcq let's see whether you can answer the posterior abdominal wall which muscle do you think is located between the anterior and middle layers now tell me between anterior and middle layer which one do you think is present you know this is of the thoracolumbar fascia i just told you the anterior one is more closer to the visceral structures and quadratus lumborum is also taking the insertion onto the 12th rib so it is more closer to the visceral means what that means they are more anterior correct so you have quadratus lumborum as the answer next what is the innervation of quadratus lumborum so here also you should remember quadratus lumborum is very close to the rib 12th rib which is in the thoracic region so this is thoracic region and next comes the lumbar region so thoracic and lumbar could be the ones which supply right it is t12 to l4 next psoas sign is a medical sign you know that it is uh, because of irritation of the iliopsoas and uh, a sign is always elicited whenever there is a flexion of the thigh at the hip joint now the patient will always uh, be tested positive if the patient reports lower abdominal pain also along with it but on the right side you should always make sure that it's an indication of appendicitis and not just you know psoas and other structures getting irritated so because here whenever uh, the iliopsoas comes in contact with the inflamed appendix it produces the sign psoas sign okay so now here all this time you were watching to an academy anatomy by dr roini and uh, today's topic was posterior abdominal wall now here is something that a interesting thing i want to share with you we have a neat combat uh, pg combat that is like a 45 questions 60 minutes test where you can test your luck test your assessment test your preparations by giving the test on 10th october at 11 am so you please enroll using my code that is r o h i n i 10 okay use this code so that you could be one of the winner so it 
it has rankings from 1 to 200 and every ranking from 1 to 200 is honored with scholarships. So you may have one full year of scholarship plus subscription or it could be 75% paid, 50 paid or 25. So see what luck holds for you and uh, you can try your luck here. There is neat uh, PG plus subscription and you have uh, a feature called raise a hand feature where you can, you know, ask the questions with your educator for one on one discussion in a live class. It could be a special class or a plus class. So this is a nice feature. Actually, students really have uh, you know, some students. They don't want to ask in public and they want to ask or send something which has a question and they don't want to type it. You can just upload that question and then we can just, you know, pick it up and answer your question. So here there are parallelly running, uh, you know, uh, batches like Mission INICT 2021, clinical examinations and procedures batch. All of them started on 22nd September. So they're all going to be to the end of this month or probably even this week. So if you want to, um, you know, just it is for three months. So it is there October, November. So if you are late, you want to just enroll quickly for next two months, you can do so. These are the procedure patches. So you have iconic subscription also with the access to an academy and prep ladder. So there is little difference in the plus and iconic where plus will give you access to the unacademy alone and iconic is much better because you will have access to dual. And you can see there are special class features. So if you attend my special class at least one time, you will know what is the feature. It is more interactive. There are polls that we have where students can, you know, uh, get the feel good feeling because they are going to answer the questions and they may have nobody answered that question and they may be the only one who have answered. So that also gives them that, uh, you know, happiness that you got it right. And there is this feature, raise a hand. There is a, you know, never miss a class. This we can guarantee you because you get notifications prior to the class. There is also PDF notes that you can download and anytime, anywhere you can access this, okay? And you can see there is always the QBank series, which you can access with uh, 25,000 high yield questions. And uh, there is limited time offer for everything. So today prices are going up. So this is the profile where you can look for me and follow me. So actually following the educator itself is like half the battle one because you like the educator, you like the subject, obviously you will start doing well in your exams in that particular no subject. So this is how you reach my profile. And this is the unlock code that you can use for getting into my special classes. You have to click on the notify me when you get the screen, click on this notify me, then this window will pop up where you can unlock your free plan. The code is a must. It is Rohini 10. And there is proud learners from our uh, Unacademy you know, app learning platform. So where they have scored on 300, they have, some of them have touched even 300. So it is like uh, 237, 250 and much, much more. So not all of them are listed, but these are all real winners. You should be proud and more get motivated by them. And this is target text and integrated batches and uh, clinical examinations, procedures batch. And you also get a lot of freebies Whenever you have done subscription, you always get some months free. So keep that in mind. So always we have something to give you. So that is four and there it is 12 plus two. Okay, this is to boost your medical PG preparation and keep you in a positive vibe all the time. So this is iconic and plus subscription uh, with the EMI option. So when you go with EMI, you are not just, you know, saving some money, but you are also getting the uh, responsibility of, you know, paying every month and you are responsible for what you paid for every month. So it's a small amount and uh, six months of um, subscription is what we look at. And you are eligible when you go with the minimum six months of subscription and the code you can use to save some amount. This is the code. It's called the unlock code, referral code, invite code. Call it anything, but this is the code. Okay, so you can access free stuff 
you can get into special classes. You can um, log into special classes. You can access all those tests and uh, quizzes with the unlock code. So this code, if you remember the code, things become much more simple. So note it down somewhere, have it handy. And uh, me, Dr. Roini, with all these, you know, I would like to sign off and you all have a wonderful day ahead. See you all soon. Take care.